Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamid Youssef. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued a circular declaring that all ministries and public institutions will remain closed on May 1st, marking the International Labor Day. As the public holiday falls on Friday, Sunday, May 3rd will also be a public holiday as a compensation. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received a phone call from Kuwait Parliament Speaker Marzouk Al Ghanem, who offered his good wishes on the holy month of Ramadan. The Speaker wished His Royal Highness steady health and happiness, and Bahrain and its people further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister expressed deep thanks to the Kuwaiti Speaker for his wishes and noble sentiments, and wished Kuwait further progress and prosperity. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praised the great response shown by citizens, residents, companies and institutions to the Fina Khair campaign on Twitter, which was launched on res in response to the major initiatives launched by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to maintain the health and safety of all citizens and residents of the kingdom since the beginning of the coronavirus. His Majesty the King had already Order to allocate a large budget to protect the human capital and the national economy against the virus. Such initiatives had made the kingdom a leading figure in combating COVID-19 globally. His Highness recalled the global appraisal that the kingdom received in light of its response to the spread of the virus, particularly by the WHO. His Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to the honorary president of the RHF, His Majesty the King, for his keenness on protecting all citizens and residents. His Highness also commended the efforts of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, as well as the efforts of Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to prevent the spread of the virus through adopting various international standards and precautionary measures. The Secretary General of the RHF, Dr. Mustafa Sayyid, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for launching the campaign with contributions amounting to 36,061,069 Bahraini dinars. He added that the campaign will end on the 30th of April. He praised all contributors who played a vital role in maintaining the social and health stability in the kingdom. A press conference was held earlier to discuss the latest developments related to COVID-19. The Foreign Affairs Ministry and our Secretary Dr. Sheikh Rana bint Isa bin Daij Al Khalifa affirmed the ministry's support to the kingdom's efforts to combat the spread of the coronavirus. She stated that in line of in light of the repatriation plan of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs coordinated with its diplomatic missions and consulates abroad to communicate with all citizens outside the kingdom to provide repatriation flights and ensure their safe return to Bahrain. She added that over 3,800 citizens were repatriated from various world countries and that the ministry will continue its efforts to repatriate the remaining citizens within a plan that continues until the end of May. She affirmed that the ministry's efforts to repatriate all citizens will continue until the last citizen returns safely to the kingdom. The CEO of the Labour Market Regulatory Authority, Osama al Absi, said that expat workers should not fear to report or call 444 if they experience symptoms and should not be worried about losing their jobs. LMRA will make sure they are stable and secured. He added that LMRA has been providing care, food and water to expat workers around Bahrain. He stated that LMRA is implementing a comprehensive plan to combat COVID-19 and deal with all expats and ensure their safety. The Undersecretary at the Ministry of Health, Walid al mana affirmed that the Ministry of Health is continuing its efforts to combat the virus. He added that Bahrain is one of the top countries in facing the virus and that the kingdom conducted tests all around the country and that only 98% have proven negative. He stressed the importance of following instructions, especially during the holy month of Ramadan, to remain healthy and safe. The infectious diseases consultant and microbiologist at the BDF Hospital and member of the National Task Force for Combating COVID-19, Colonel Dr. Manaf al Gahtani, stressed the importance of abiding by the precautionary measures set by the Ministry of Health during the holy month of Ramadan, adding that the precautionary measures have provided their success in combating the coronavirus. He stated that Bahrain still has a capacity for tests and treatment and professional medical team is also available. He noted that Bahrain has been exceptionally ready to handle the virus, making significant accomplishments in this regard. He concluded by stating that the coronavirus is a test for the world and that Bahrain has passed the test with its protocols in handling the virus. 
a consultant and of infectious and internal diseases at Samania Medical Complex, Dr. Jamila Salman, noted that everyone should continue to follow precautions and instructions set by the Ministry of Health to ensure the success of, of the national plan to combat the coronavirus. She stated that the current cases are stable and that the recovered cases are constantly increasing. She added that the discharge will be monitored for a period of four weeks to ensure their health and safety as well as the safety of the community. She noted that Bahrain continues communication with world countries to learn about their successful experiences regarding treatments. She affirmed the importance of following instructions and guidelines, especially social distancing, in order to contain the spread of the virus. The General Directorate of the Affairs of the Holy Mosque of Saudi Arabia has carried out a series of precautionary measures, including social distancing, to keep worshippers from praying closely to one another during the performance of the Taraweeh prayers at the Holy Mosque. The application of the precautionary measures comes as a part of the Kingdom's efforts to contain the outbreak and to prevent it from reaching those who work to maintain the Holy Mosque following the decision of the custodian of the two Holy Mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, to allow the Taraweeh prayers to take place. The Holy Mosque is experiencing a number of other precautionary measures which include the intensification of the sanitization process throughout the day in order to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. A Ministry of Health spokesman said that more than a million people in Saudi Arabia have benefited from mass COVID-19 testing since the initiative was launched more than two weeks ago. Field trips are being carried out to enforce control over the spread of the virus in the kingdom and the number of recoveries reached 2,531. Of the 1,289 new cases recorded, 16% were Saudis and 84% were expats. There are currently 16,136 active cases, 117 of which are in critical care. The launch day of the mass screening helped to detect 400 cases earlier this month. The UAE announced that the number of recovered cases in the country has risen to 2,090 after recording 112 new recoveries for patients fully recovering from the virus. About 30,000 new examinations revealed 490 new cases of different nationalities, showing that the plan to expand the scope of the test is continuing. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi issued edict to extend the state of emergency throughout the country for a period of three months starting from today. The decision is due to the serious security and health conditions the country is going through. The second topic of the edict stipulates that the armed forces of the police force and the police force take the necessary measures to confront the dangers and financing of terrorism, maintain security in all parts of the country, protect public and private properties, and keep citizens safe. The Arab coalition in Yemen affirmed that the Houthi militia breaches of the 48-hour ceasefire extension amounted to 151 breaches. They include hostilities and the use of light and heavy weapons. The coalition announced the extension of the ceasefire for a month starting last Thursday after the previous announcement on April 8th of the ceasefire for a period of two weeks. In other developments, the Saudi-led Arab coalition supporting Yemen's UN-recognized government urged all parties to end any escalation of hostilities and return to the status of the existed before the Southern Transitional Council declares self-rule. The coalition emphasized the need to cancel any step that violates the Riyadh Agreement and work to accelerate its implementation. The UAE Minister of State for Foreign Affairs Anwar Gargash said that the UAE support full implementation of a peace deal agreed last year for the South. And now we move to Yasmin with the latest in business news. Thank you, Mohammed. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Yasmin Ibrahim. Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,302.14 points, marking a decrease of 5.45 points below the previous closing. This decrease was due to the fall in the commercial bank sector. 83 equity transactions took place with a volume of 7,176,957, worth 1,035,994 Bahraini dinars. Investors traded mainly in the commercial bank sector, representing 60.22% of the total value of securities traded.
Stocks are closing higher on Wall Street and around the world as governments prepare to gradually lift restrictions they imposed on businesses to slow the sweep of the pandemic. The S&P 500 rose 1.5% at the start of the week. That's packed with market-moving events. Several major central banks are meeting, including the Bank of Japan, which announced its latest measures to prop up markets. A few of the biggest U.S. companies are also scheduled to report how much profit they made in the first three months of 2020. Bond yields rose and the price of oil fell. Seeking to ease concerns amid the pandemic, President Donald Trump predicted a speedy economy recovery during his daily White House briefing. The White House released new guidelines on reopening businesses. The third and the fourth quarter in particular are going to be, I think, spectacular. We were talking about it with the executives. I think we're going to have a phenomenal third quarter. Nobody, you know, except one country can be held accountable for what happened. Uh, nobody's blaming anybody here. Uh, we're looking at a group of people that should have stopped it at the source. But uh, so what happens in second happens in second. What we are doing is I think we're going to have you're going to see a big rise in the third, but you're going to see a, in, an incredible fourth quarter and you're going to have an incredible next year. The European Union's top economy official says new figures show that growth in the 19 nations using the euro single currency will shrink, specifically this year and more than during the previous financial crisis. The outbreak and spread of the pandemic has uh, changed our economic outlook uh, dramatically. Um, it was already fragile before the crisis due to downside risks. Uh, but it is now clear that a deep recession in Europe is unavoidable this year. As Valdis said, we will uh, present in uh, the 7th of May our spring forecast. Uh, we can have as reference uh, the uh, IMF latest uh, world uh, economic outlook. Um, giving uh, for the global economy uh, a negative shrink by 3%. And finally, before we conclude our business news for this evening, let's take a look at how stock markets around the world fared in daily trading. And that is it from the business desk. It's back to you, Mohammed. Thank you, Yasmin. Over 7 million of the region's residents were forced to stay indoors for months when in August last year, India stripped rest of Kashmir of its semi-autonomy and enforced a total communications blackout. But inside this workshop, it's buzzing with the sound of sewing machines. An army of volunteers is making personal protective equipment for health workers as the coronavirus pandemic drives increased demand. Tailors and fashion designers are turning their skills to making masks, suits and face shields. Kashmir has had far less confirmed cases of COVID-19 compared to India, but some experts say there is an acute shortage of high-quality PPE kits across hospitals in the region, putting doctors and frontline workers at risk.